Hey everybody, BrickLover18 here today with another episode of Ask Brick. Before we get started on today's episode, I just like every single episode, I request that you leave your comments for Ask Brick down in the comments below. Unfortunately, there will not be an episode next week because I am away on vacation and this is a pre-filmed episode like a week before. So unfortunately, there will be no episode next week, but I will continue with all the comments that you leave down below in an episode the week after. Thank you so much for understanding. Gluing your LEGO sets and mocks protects them from breaking, but it stops you from ever using those parts again. LEGO allows you to glue and unglue your LEGO sets so you can keep them safe, but use the parts again in the future. Visit the link in the description to learn more and check out LEGO in all its glory in my LEGO video. Subscribe to BrickLover18 for more daily LEGO videos. The first question is from 3FM2. Do you check secondhand stores for Lego? I check secondhand stores for Lego as much as I can all the time because sometimes we get really lucky and find an awesome lot that somebody just donated or sold to them full of a bunch of old new sets that are perfect. The only reason I was able to build my NCIS mock was because I had found a secondhand lot full of red bricks. I've found many really good secondhand lots of Lego, but unfortunately most of them are not from secondhand stores. And I just think because people realize that secondhand stores, in my area anyway, this could be totally different for other areas, they really rely on donations or big ticket items that they will purchase. So a lot of times people just list it on Facebook or Kijiji or something like that, trying to sell it themselves before they sell it on secondhand stores. I have a, many different secondhand stores in my local community and I have requested all of them to contact me as soon as they find any Lego because most likely I'll be interested in. None of them ever do, so I have to continuously check and I have not really been very lucky with finding anything really good at Lego. You know, once you'll find the odd item, like the odd old box of Lego or the odd you know little tub or set or something like that but most of the time I'm never lucky but I do honestly constantly check secondhand stores because sometimes you do get lucky and I have before. An unknown user asked will you do custom Lego figs? I do custom figs all the time uh, they're fun for me to do because sometimes Lego just does not make the parts that I need. Uh, a lot of people receive a lot of criticism when they make secondhand figs just because a lot of people think that Lego should not be painted on or things like that. So I tend, it's not just because they tell me not to, but I do tend not to make secondhand figs, or like, not secondhand figs, I'm still on the last question. I tend not to make too many custom figures just because they take a lot of time and a lot of different coats and I tend to screw up a couple times before I get it right. Plus, they just take a lot of time and that's, I don't have a lot of time to be painting Lego minifigures. And then, as I mentioned, a lot of people don't like them, you know, it's a sin to paint on Lego. I definitely don't agree with that. But if you're referring to why I don't make custom figures to sell, it's that reason people don't want to buy painted LEGO figures. And the other reason, I just don't have a lot of time, but I do love to make custom figures. Epic Blue Gamer asks, Why did you name your channel BrickLover18? I decided to name my channel BrickLover18 because I didn't know what else to name it. If I was thinking way back at the time, I would have named it something without a number in it, like No18 or something like that. But I really wasn't thinking, and the only reason I would name it without an 18 was because I don't know if it's real or not, but popu more popular channels tend not to have numbers in them, and I think it's just because it's easier for people to, you know, remember, you know, just Brick Lover. But I was going to be just Brick Lover, but somebody else already had a YouTube channel named Brick Lover, but they didn't post anything. Like, they just had the username claimed, and that was way back when you could not have two of the same usernames here on YouTube. So it was just going to be Brick Lover. But then somebody else had that, so I'm like, oh crap, I can't be Brick Lover. So I'm like, oh, I'll be Brick Lover 18 because I was born on November 18th, just like Bricks for Chris, by the way. And I'm like, I'll just do that. November, Brick Lover 18, November 18th, it's perfect. Now, almost four years later, I kind of regret putting the 18. I kind of regret the name in general. I wish I had something a little bit cooler, maybe catchier or something like that. But you know what? Brick Lover 18 is a pretty good name, I think. And I don't want to change it now because then all, all my branding shot. Like I have a thousand business cards that I need to get rid of. I can't get rid of them if they say Brick Lover 18 and I'm not Brick Lover 18 anymore. Plus I have a banner and a decal and another banner and more decals and a sign and just everything says Brick Lover 18 so it's not, not changing it now. And it's kind of the same reason why my Sig Fig has yellow pants. 
They are honestly just meant to be yellow pants, but everybody thinks the sig fig's naked, and that's not true. And if my whole channel, like logos and things like that, weren't based around the yellow pants, the yellow and black like colors, I would probably change it. But I have a banner that's yellow, a decal that's yellow, a sign that's yellow, business cards that's yellow, a pen that's yellow. The Sig Fig's just, it's set. It's branding. I can't change it now. It's just kind of like if Nike decided that they were going to change from the orange and white to like purple and pink. Like a lot of people wouldn't go for that and their brand wouldn't be as recognizable anymore. I am unfortunately now known as the guy with the naked Sig Fig. Tough Bricks NZ asked, what's your favorite Angry Birds set of 2016? Well, I think they're all pretty cool. They're not too special for me because I don't really play video games, so I don't really know what Angry... Well, I know what Angry Birds is because I don't live under a rock. But they all look pretty much the same. I mean, I didn't know there could be many different sets of Angry Birds. Like, isn't it just you throw the bird at the same pile of stuff every single time? Apparently not. But all I really want is the Angry Birds figure, and that... So I might even just buy a set to part out just to get that red Angry Birds because it looks pretty neat. So the last question of the day is from the Brick Toad. What is your favorite brick? My favorite Lego piece. It, I guess it counts as a brick. But my overall favorite Lego piece is the Lego Movie Camera. I love this camera. This camera came probably out in 2001 or something like that. It is honestly the sickest Lego piece ever. I had no idea that there was even such thing as the Lego piece until I went to Brick Fair. I think it was Brick Fair or something like that. And I saw this camera, I'm like, whoa, that's sick. I didn't even know they had a studio scene, like I was too young to really, I was thick of No, it was the first time before Brick Fair, it was 2012, when I went to a Lego store and they told me about Bricklink. I got the story all wrong, so I'm retelling it. I went, I went to Bricklink, saw the old studios, thought that was awesome, bought the director without even knowing I was buying on Bricklink, because I was in my hotel room, on my computer, before my parents were even up. So that was a mistake. I ended up paying for it because I'm not a no-paying buyer. I've never been a no-paying buyer. Anyway, that was my first Brooklyn story. Not good. And then I noticed that they had, like, Lego cameras. So I ended up ordering these. This time I meant to order them. All the way from Norway or something like that. I ordered, like, 33 of these movie-style cameras. That was, like, the most on Brooklyn at the time. Well, not the most, but the cheapest or something like that. Plus they had 32. I love that movie-style camera. My favorite piece of all time. Thanks everybody for watching this story time edition of Ask Rick. I really hope you enjoyed. Again, don't forget to leave your comments down below. Unfortunately, I will not be getting to them, not next week, but the week after when I get back from my vacation. And I thank you for understanding. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.